everyone, how's it going? In case you're new here, my name is Atisa and I will be starting graduate entry medicine at the University of Birmingham in September. So today, the video that I'm going to be making is going to be all about the UCAT exam or previously known as the UK CAT exam. Now, the UCAT exam is an admissions exam that you have to take if you would like to apply to certain courses such as medicine or dentistry across a variety of universities across the UK, but now also Australia and New Zealand. So we can go over the structure of the exam, what it's all about, what it tests for, and I can share with you some of the lessons that I learned and some of the mistakes I made so you guys can avoid them. And overall, just to share with you some resources and tips and things like that so you can get the highest scores. But before we get in all of that, I want to address the name change because as I mentioned, the UCAT exam used to be referred to as the UK CAT exam. In short, there are no changes to the content of the exam, the structure is exactly the same, the way and the format of the exam is exactly the same and the change in the name is only reflective of the fact that while previously the exam would only be taken in the UK this exam is now going to be used to select applicants in Australian universities and also universities in New Zealand and that's pretty much all there is to it UK CAT stood for the UK clinical aptitude test whereas the UCAT is UCAT because it is a university clinical aptitude test and that's it the actual UCAT website has a page explanation all of the changes so I can link that below and if you want a little bit more information or you want to have certain things cleared up then go and have a little read of that below. So that's out of the way let's talk a little bit about what the UCAT actually is and why universities use it. As I said, the UCAT is an admissions test in which a number of schools use to select candidates onto the medical and dentistry programs. The exam tests for mental abilities, general aptitude, as well as professional behaviours. And because of that, it helps the universities to select the most suitable candidates for those courses. For students that want to take this exam, UCAT is actually a computer-based exam and you can take it in various different centres across the UK and also internationally. Registration for this exam exam starts around the start of May so right around this time is the time when the registration is open and if you are considering taking this exam then you can go ahead and book yourself a slot and again I will link below both the website for the UK and also for Australia and New Zealand so get in there early Next, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the exam and the typical kind of questions that you could be asked. So the exam itself is two hours long and it is split into five sections. And these sections test for a variety of different abilities and aptitudes. So I can briefly discuss all of them with you now. I have got my laptop and I will also give you an example of each of the questions that you may get asked. So to begin with, we have got verbal reasoning. Now, this is a section in which you are given a passage of text and based on this passage, you will be asked a number of questions. Now, typically you tend to get two types of questions, which are either true or false or trying to infer some sort of information from the text that you've been given. And essentially, the purpose of this section is to be able to assess your ability to evaluate written information. Typically, the text that you get will be completely unrelated to medicine, so it's just about any topic and you do get quite a large passage and because of that you have to really train to try and read quickly and gather the relevant amounts of information very quickly. So the first example that I'm showing here is just an example of a true, false or a can't tell question and secondly I have got another question and you have to select the correct answer based on the text. And all of this is under quite strict time pressure so you gotta be quick. Then section two we have got decision making. So in this section, you will be provided with a variety of different problems that you have to work through. And for example, these could include being provided with an opening statement. And based on that opening statement, there are a variety of conclusions and you have to make a decision as to whether the conclusions follow or not. You may also be given things like Venn diagrams and be asked to infer information from those. And also other things such as being provided with an argument that you have to draw conclusions from. Or I suppose, try and evaluate that argument. So again, I've got an example here where you're given an opening statement and then you have been given a number of conclusions in which you have to decide whether the conclusions follow or not based on the original statement. And similarly, we have another decision-making question followed by a number of arguments and you have to try and select what the strong strongest argument is from the statements that are given below. And as I said, these are only two of the types of questions that you get within the decision-making section. There are a number of other ones as well, but I will link 
link some details below so you can go and have a look at it in your own time. Next, we have got quantitative reasoning. Now, this is a section in which you're provided with numerical information and you will be asked to look at a graph or a table or a chart and be asked to evaluate and obtain information from what you have been given. This essentially assesses your ability to evaluate numerical information and the example that I have chosen is one in which you have been given a table of percentages and based on that you are given four questions. Now, a lot of people get worried about this section because they say, you know, my maths isn't very strong, will I be asked to calculate quite complicated things? And I have to say that the maths itself is generally quite uh, simple. The trick is to be able to pick up on the correct pieces of information that you need in order to calculate the question. So if you aren't the top of your class for like trigonometry or calculus, don't worry, you'll be fine. Then we have got the fourth section, which is abstract reasoning. Now, this is a section in which you'll be provided with patterns or shapes and what you are asked to do here is to infer relationships between these shapes and patterns that you see. For example, you may be given two sets of shapes, as I have shown in this example, set A and set B, and you will be asked which shapes that you are given fall into either category. Another type of question that you may be asked within this section is the one that is shown on the screen now. Now here you have been given some sort of a pattern. So for example, the first shape is to the second shape and you've been asked to select the pattern that completes the statement below. And here, what essentially you have to do is try and identify the pattern of what has happened to the first shape in order to get to the second. And based on this logic, choose the most appropriate shape from the ones that you can select from to complete the statement. Now, I know that this is a section that a lot of people are kind of ambivalent about because it is just really abstract as it says in the name, but I wouldn't let that put you off. I think with enough practice and with enough effort to try and get yourself familiarized with the kind of questions you get, then you should be able to work through them systematically just like the other sections. And last but not least, you have got situational judgment. Now this was always my favorite section and essentially in this section you will be provided with real life scenarios and you would be asked to identify which is the correct or I guess the most professional action that you can take and what is the best behavior that you can show in that situation. So for example, you may be given a statement and you may be asked whether a certain action is very inappropriate, inappropriate, appropriate, or very appropriate. And this just tests your ability to make decisions and make professional decisions in various scenarios. So if you are coming across this for the first time, it can seem a little bit overwhelming, but I think with enough practice and by using the right resources, then you should be able to feel much more comfortable with it. And on that note, I guess let's talk a little bit about how you can start preparing for this exam. Now, I set this exam last year when I was making my applications to medical school. And I think there were so many mistakes that I made and there were a lot of things that I learned through my experience. So I want to kind of incorporate a lot of those as well in talking to you about how to prepare. When it comes to the UCAT, there are so many resources out there from books to websites to courses, but I think hands down the most useful resource out there is online question banks. Now I can definitely say that a mistake I made was focusing far too much on using books, but the best thing about using online resources is that it's on the computer, so this is going to be the thing that is going to resemble the actual exam more than anything else that you could use. The one that I personally used when I was practicing for my exams was Medify, and the questions that I actually showed you as examples, they were from that website. They have a lot of questions out there, and I think the fact that you can repetitively practice these is what essentially helps you become perfect. Now, as I said, one of the biggest mistakes I made was to rely heavily on books at the beginning. And the problem with this is that you can't benefit as much from them unless you are very, very stringent and very, very strict with timing. Now, I had this experience where when I was first starting, I would just sit and systematically work through books. But the most important thing about this exam, which I guess I learned the hard way, is that you have to practice 
answering the questions within the time limits. And this is why I always advise any student to use resources like Medify because everything is completely timed so that you can systematically work through and realize which questions you can and can't answer within a set time limit. First starting off, it's okay to spend longer on each of the questions. So if you have never seen the questions before, it's okay to take maybe like five or 10 or even 15 minutes to work through some of the problems just to get your head around it. But the sooner you can start timing, uh, timing yourself and working on the strict time conditions, the better it is going to be for you. And trust me, that is the number one thing that I would say to myself. The other thing that I think is really important when it comes to preparing is finding a way to track your progress. Again, Medify already has a way of tracking your progress for you because when you first sign up, you can enter the day that you're going to be taking the exam. And from that day, your progress will be tracked. So every time you answer a question, the program will be able to pick up which are your strongest areas and which are your weakest areas. And having these kind of, I guess, statistics on your performance really helps when it comes to deciding which areas you want to focus on. So again, as I said, when I was using books, I was literally going through them page by page and I wasn't really aware of which ones I was doing well on and which, one I, which ones I wasn't. And speaking of staying on track, this is my next piece of advice. I, again, learned through making mistakes that I really, really should have started preparing earlier. I left the majority of my prep to do, quite frankly, far too close to the exam. I think when I was starting off and trying to get a feel for how long it takes other students to get ready, a lot of places such as the student room or just general online places said that it takes around two weeks to practice and that you don't want to start too early because you don't want to peak too early. But for me, that was definitely not enough, especially because at the time that I was preparing for my exam, I was working full time. So two weeks wouldn't actually be two weeks of hardcore practice, which I guess might be enough if you're doing it like nine to five every day for two weeks. But I was working full time and two weeks for me only meant a couple of hours in the evening. And as I said, if you are a student who has the summer off and you can spend two hours of solid practice, then that might work in your favor. But if you are in my situation and you have other stuff going on, then definitely start preparing earlier. So if you do decide to use Medify, then you can book a subscription for different time periods. So you can use two weeks if you know you're going to have two weeks of solid prep time. Or in my case, you can book like an early bird subscription, which will give you, I think up to four months of practicing time, which will be great if you're only doing short bursts over a long period of time. Now I can't really say for certain which works better. I think it comes down to the individual. But the reason why I feel the need to say this is because I thought that by two weeks I should be ready. I should be completely fine to do this. When in reality, I think I would have needed more time and I definitely needed more practice. So if you think you may be the same, then try and get the longer subscriptions and practice over a longer period of time. And I will actually link below both the UK and also the Australian and New Zealand link for Medify down below. So go and check them out if you're interested. I've definitely mentioned them in my previous videos as well. And the last thing I want to say about how to prepare for this exam is to try and do mock exams as earlier as earliest as possible again this is a mistake I made because I kept telling myself I'm not ready yet I'm not yet ready yet like I will take an exam when I feel ready and by the time that I actually came around to doing mock exams they were rushed and I didn't get a chance to go over them properly and I really don't think that I benefited from the mock exam experience as much as I could have now as I said the UCAT website itself offers three free mock exams and I would say try and keep those near nearer to the time when you're setting your exam. But Medify itself does offer various other mock exams, so that just gives you a much bigger number to work through. So yeah, I think if I can go back, I would say to myself to do mock exams as early as possible because as well as preparing yourself for the questions, you are preparing yourself for the mental fatigue that you will experience from sitting for two hours straight and working through these quite challenging questions. And while I think it's okay to work in relatively short bursts, if you're saying, okay, so today I just wanna do quantitative reasoning, or today I just wanna do situational judgment, while that's okay if you know that's just for prep, I would definitely, definitely say, do as many mock exams as you can to get used to what the pressure on the day is going to be like because two hours is a long time and you want to make sure that you can reduce your anxiety and deal with the mental fatigue and you want to prepare for those things before the actual day. 
And I guess to wrap it up guys, I just want to say a few words of encouragement if you like, because I know this exam is challenging, I know a lot of students fear it, I know it can cause a lot of mental fatigue, but I do generally believe that if you spend the right amount of time, use the right resources and really take it seriously, then you have the opportunity to do well. I really hope you can learn from the bunch of the mistakes I made. I know if I had to go back and do it, I would do so many things differently as I've mentioned in this video. So I hope you can take a few of those lessons, apply them to your situation, and hopefully do the best that you can in this exam. Okay, so I guess I will wrap it up here, but I wish you the very best of luck. Let me know how you're doing on your medicine journey down below. And until next time, my lovelies, take care, and I will see you later.